All right, guys, it's Copper Cutlass, and I am making this video today just kind of as an update as to what we got going on and what we got planned for the winter months. Uh, as you know, in the Midwest, typically you have between five and six months of downtime. And what are we going to do with that? Well, our downtime hasn't just started yet, but we're planning for it. So um, this is the block that we hurt. Um, this was a 350 with the J heads. Uh, my buddy is doing the J heads. Um, he is uh, uh, almost done with them. Uh, number five cylinder got sleeved. So, you know, we were able to save it. Uh, the block has to get cleaned still and washed uh, for final assembly, final clean and wash, of course. Um, but we're going to be doing that in the basement like we did last year with the uh, number six headed 350 that's back in the old. Obviously with the cylinder heads that my buddy Dave at Freak Cylinder Head Service um, did. So you can look him up on Facebook uh, under Freak Cylinder Head Service. Uh, he did both sets of, uh, he did, well, he went over the J heads. They were ported at one point. And then the number sixes, Dave has actually done twice, but he went further second time around. And what we are planning uh, besides that is I'm going to build another transmission. I got a turbo 350 sitting right there that I'm going to put together. Um, I need to make a little space, so I think I should build a transmission, um, something a little bit fresher for the Pontiac. The transmission that's in the Pontiac has been in the Pontiac. I mean, working good, but I don't know what good is, to be honest with you, but neither here, neither there, but that's one of our plans. That's going to get done in the next couple of weeks. I have to paint that, and we still got some good weather, so, and I got a heater for out here anyway, so it's not a problem. When I painted this hood, I did this in like middle, end of November, so um, all this stuff is going to come down to the basement. I cleaned up the garage today, as you can see, we're a little bit better and organized. Um, we bought a set of used drag radials to try out, but in lieu of time and whatever, next weekend the weather outlook looks good. I'm going to take the car out one more time. I'm going to do an oil change on it just because I'm going to lock out the distributor this time around because we already know what the car did with the timing curve change and with the carburetor changes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to lock down the distributor this time at 34 degrees and we're going to bump it up to 36 and probably play with that. And we're going to run it with the bias plies. But once we feel that it's good with the timing changes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the radials on there, which I'm borrowing a set of radials from a friend of mine for the day. So that saves me a little bit of hassle of having to run around and get tires mounted and balanced and all that shit. So um, it's going to save me some work in the long run. So yes, if next weekend the weather is still good, um, I'm planning for a Saturday test day. And uh, since my carburetor is pretty much set up, a uh, big thank you to Mylan for helping me uh, with advice and squaring it away. Um, I think we're just going to take the car out and test it, and I'm not going to bother running it through the mufflers. I'm just going to put the extensions and take the exhaust off altogether. Um, but obviously, uh, last weekend when we went to our home track, the car ran an 1163 at 115, but the 60 foot's still down, and uh, locking out the timing may help with that a little bit, but we're down uh, about a Tenth and a half on the 60 foot. And once we get that squared away, this car should go into the 1130s. And we're, we're going to make small changes. Uh, again, tire change, timing change is small. Um, I am trying to locate a set of short 26 inch slicks as well, because that's going to make our gear act a little bit taller numerically. And we are trapping at about 6,500. I am shifting at 7,000. So we do have a little bit of real estate there. And the goal is to try to get the car to run as fast as it possibly can before we make a gear and or converter change. And honestly, factoring in converter slippage, I have to talk to, um, I think I'm going to end up going with Circle D for uh, a converter. I'm going to have to call them um, and talk to them and give them everything 
on the car. And the whole goal is to get the car to run as good as it can with what we got. And if we don't have to make a gear change, then we don't have to make a gear change. But if we do make a gear change to say like a 456, we can go to a 30 inch tall tire and it'll act like a 430. So there is also that, uh, you know, but, um, and with a taller tire, you will carry a better mile per hour and you're going to get that, uh, you know, because of the gear set still, you're going to get a good launch, but you're going to, you know, it's going to act the same. It's, it's all physics uh, at the end of the day. I'm actually kind of quoting mile in there. You really can't change the physics of certain things. And even though we struggled this year, um, I think the car is headed in the right direction. And I think with the bias ply, this thing should go probably 11, 16 ish under just a little under 117. I don't think I, I, I don't see it getting any better than that, but we did see an improvement, um, with the mile an hour, uh, which is, you know, obviously I think all said and done, there's other things we can do to probably maximize truly what we have, but dude, like, I honestly think that if we probably were to change and, and get like a custom camshaft for this setup, if we were to flow the heads, and base it around the the setup this thing would probably run way better but we're still dealing with the old camshaft that was in there that has reported so obviously now you know the the response isn't the same we there's a lot of you know there's a lot of factors involved and i'm not going to get into it because it's it's a little bit over my head as well uh, but i'm learning as i'm going through all this i am learning as i'm going through all of this crap so as you can see we have organized everything, and I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to show you guys the basement setup this year, which changed a little bit. I'm kind of proud of it. All right, guys, and for the second part of the video, this is the shop, the basement shop, I guess you would call it. Um, I got years and years of uh, hot rod, car craft, Hemmings, muscle car, popular hot rodding magazines, along with all of my technical references and all of my notebooks with notes and stuff engines past and whatnot i got my ghetto little tool cart box which has all of the essentials that i really need for what i'm doing down here i just bought this this was a cheap socket set and wrench set from menards um but we have you know our cam bearing install tool here and we have you know our, our, our basic needs we got as i've upgraded a lot of my electric tools at work i've brought all of my older stuff home which is fine for what we're doing here but under a production setting, these tools are a little worn out, but for home, all this stuff is perfect. You know, we got pliers, just the basics is what we need down here. We're not, you know, we're building engines. We only need a certain amount of tools. Our specialty stuff is in here. We got our micrometer set. We got an ID, uh, telescoping gauges. We got an I ID mics. Um, I have my dial bore gauge, my micrometers of course my stuff isn't the fanciest but it does the job it gets me to get my numbers and specs to what i need to find out of course um batteries uh, my carburetor box with jets and stuff is here because i am working on this carburetor this is a 750 this is what i ran on that j-headed uh 750 uh, j-headed so that j-headed 350 this is the 750 i ran on there and it worked really well. Uh, so I want to set that carburetor up for that engine. And we're going to pretty much have a whole setup for that car. I'm going to try to get another pro billet distributor. And that way, that engine is going to be its own deal. And the engine that's in the car is also going to be its own deal. So that, that'll that be also good. Now, of course, on this side, if I were to walk around, you guys can see we got parts. I got shift kits, gasket sets, uh, cams, push rods rocker arms, just a bunch of random stuff that I got, um, like, you know, wire spools, I got wiring stuff, bus bars, all that good stuff, um, kind of set it up a little different this year, because we, I decided to do a couple different things, that is my bathroom in there, uh, that is my daily use bathroom, since uh, my wife doesn't want me in her, so I got, I, I made my own, so, but, uh, but yeah, that's what we got going on. We're going to be hitting the track next weekend. So stay tuned. Maybe we'll be able to improve on our ET. Today would have been a perfect day to hit the track. The weather was absolutely perfect, but uh, there was stuff to do around the house. I wasn't just working out in the garage. I did yard work. I went to. I actually went to work for a couple of hours and did stuff. And right now my wife and I are working on dinner. And while I'm waiting on a couple of things, I figured I'd make this video. 
just to update you guys on what's going on, what we got planned, and what's to come. I also am going to be building a Ford uh, transmission, an automatic, uh, with my buddy who I race with. And uh, he's also going to be building an engine, which I'm sure I'm going to be helping him with as well. But uh, either way, share, like, subscribe, guys. My, uh, my, my views are kind of dropping, which is not good because uh, we were doing really good there for a while. So uh, you guys got to hit the like button. You guys got to share. You guys got to subscribe. Um, and uh, I'm going to keep doing what I do. And I'm going to keep showing you guys what I've been doing. So I'll let you guys go.